Now this is a car that you've seen a lot, you've heard a lot about it. But the Datsun Go is finally road ready and it's here. Now this little low cost car is aiming at the big guns like the Maruti Alto 800 and the Hyundai Eon. Can it make a go of it? That's what I'm here to find out. The first thing that I really find in this Go is that the steering position is a bit high and I was looking around for the steering adjust but there isn't any. It's not that visibility is hampered but it just feels a little high up to hold. Under the hood, the Go has the same 3-cylinder 1.2 petrol engine that's in the Micra Active. But then, this is a lighter car. And it does feel light. It's a nice peppy engine. Put your foot down and you get nice surges of power. It's easy to nip in and out of those gaps in traffic. And when you don't have to do that, it's equally easy to put it into a higher gear and amble around at lower RPMs. The gears are light but feel a bit notchy, especially shifting down into second and moving into first. It has a nice strong mid-range too which helps and it's only when you get past the 4000 RPM mark that you begin to hear it working hard. There's also a noticeable vibration at idle. The engine is a peppy performer but it promises to be efficient too and it should be easy on the pocket with a claimed figure of 20.6 kilometers per litre. Get onto an open stretch of road and you'll find that the Go gets to triple digit speeds pretty effortlessly and you can cruise pretty well too. In our test we got a figure of 15 seconds to the 100 mark which is a respectable figure for a car of this size. At higher speeds you notice the lack of insulation a little bit more. Road noise and even wind noise makes its presence felt in the cabin. The Datsun Go doesn't offer ABS or airbags even on the top-end version. And so though dynamically it feels safe, it really isn't the safest option. These should have been offered even if just as an option. When you want to stop in a hurry, the Go protests a bit and there's a lot of squealing and screeching. Also because of its lightweight, the crosswinds affect it a bit. Still, there is decent enough straight line stability for a car of its size and you don't ever feel nervous. It's a light and easy steering which makes the car very manoeuvrable, nipping in and out of the gaps in traffic and parking is going to be easy too. But yet, it gives you good feedback when you're out on a highway at higher speeds and you always feel comfortable and safe. Around the corners, it's a little bit different. It has quite a bit of roll, but the car still grips the road well. And when you do move about with the roll, you realize that even the front passenger doesn't have a grab handle to hold on to. But if you're not going too fast, it's not something you'll miss, as the Go deals with the roads pretty well in the city. Now, the ride quality is actually quite good for a car this size. It sort of smoothens all the bumps and potholes quite a bit. It's only the larger dips that it goes through that it thunks. Basically, the suspension extends nicely but comes crashing back too fast, making a sound. And the lack of insulation makes the suspension more audible inside. So you hear it, especially when you're going through the ditches. So that's how the Datsun Go is on the go. But let's spend some time looking around the car a bit. Datsun is banking on the Indian pension for good-looking cars to attract eyeballs. And they should. The diamond-shaped grille, the angular swept-back lamps and the nice character lines along the side make it quite smart-looking. The swept-forward rear windshield has hints of the Nissan Leaf. And it's a car that you will like when you look at it. If at all there's something to complain about, it's the diet size 155-70 R13 tyres that look a bit too skinny. On the inside, you won't get wowed. It's nowhere near the likes of the Eon and even the doors feel a little light and tinny. When you get inside here, you'll realise it's pretty, pretty basic. It's a very simple layout, two-tone, glove box doesn't have a cover. It looks nice, quality is good of all the switchgear and knobs and buttons. But 
it's basic like I'm saying and you have some very very simplistic things like the handbrake which is a pull tight lever over here and I need two hands to release it. Uh, the gear lever has moved up to the central console to make space here in the center for this additional seat space. Now great for someone like me to put my handbag on or store some extra papers and stuff. But in India I have a worry. I think people will tend to put small babies and kids here. There isn't a seat belt. Even the top end variant doesn't get ABS and airbags. So that's a bit of a worry. The aircon vents are from the Micra and their controls are lower down the dash. The switches and stalks are all from the Micra too and work really well. The cost cutting is apparent in quite a few other areas. There is a single wiper up front and no rear wiper. The fabric seat covers are also not finished neatly and look a little low rent. The side mirrors are manual and I mean manual. There isn't even a toggle, you have to use your hands to move them. However, on the positive side, you do get distance to empty, real-time average and overall average on your digital trip. What's really nice is this phone dock. You can put your iPod or your phone and you can directly plug it into the aux. So you can use your navigation system or, you know, use the music straight out of here. And that's the only music you'll have because there is no radio and no stereo system. Practicality wise, this is pretty good. It feels spacious and airy. There are loads of storage spaces like the large glove box. There's a uh, storage space for phone and coins and small things under the steering wheel over here. I have a bottle holder in the pocket. You do have power windows up front, but the driver can only operate his side and the passenger has to be operated from that side. And the rear windows have manual winders. It's spacious up front, like I said, but let's get into the back and see what that's all about. I have to say that the engineers have really worked the space well. Uh, there's good enough legroom here at the back. I think the slim seats, if you see the seats, they're very, very slim, the back and the front seat, and that makes way for a lot of room within this cabin. So you have good enough legroom, you have nice headroom, seat is wide enough to fit three people. Um, the squab is a bit short, but uh, the recline angle is nice and it's a comfortable back seat. Despite the slim backs, the seats themselves are really comfortable. You can see the cost cutting in the seat belts too. Now these are not the kind that you just pull out. You have to sort of manually adjust the seats. They're not retractable ones. I don't have anything in my hands now, but if I did have my hands full of shopping bags, I'd be a little irritated because there's no way to release this boot from the outside. You have to go around, open the door and release it from the lever on the inside. Well, once you open the boot, you will definitely be impressed. Look at the amount I've managed to put in this car. I've got two strollies, a third one here, the tripod case, my handbag and there's still room to squeeze in more. Once you're on the move, the goes easy to drive nature and Peppy engine makes you forget the little niggling nuances and the car begins to grow on you. There may be a lot of cost cutting and features that are missing, but they're small things that you can learn to live with. Now Datsun are going to have to work hard to build up their reputation in the Indian market being a new name. They're going to have to gain the trust of the consumer. But if this car is launched at the prices we expect, which was like I mentioned earlier around the 3.2 lakh mark for the base version, well then this car is definitely going to give the competition a run for their money.